So initially I'd hoped to leave this video until I had sent off for my Irish passport, but as it's taken a little bit longer than I hoped for, I figured now is as good a time as any to look at the Irish tanks I would like to see added to War Thunder. This episode will deal purely with the actual tanks used by Ireland, with a future episode to cover the various armoured cars used by Ireland, and honestly, I think you could get a small subtree out of the various Irish tanks and armoured cars, though I could also see some of these being added as premium or event vehicles as well. Like with the other Irish vehicles already in the game, like the Laola Corvette and the Vickers Mark 11, which is based on the Irish Timoni APC, these would probably be added to the British tech tree, but they could also fit into other tech trees if required. So for the first two tanks we will be looking at the Vickers Medium Mark D and the Landsverk L60, with tanks of these two designs being brought by Ireland in the interwar period, and were the only tanks Ireland had available for the interwar and World War II period. So starting with the Vickers Medium Mark D, this was a one-off design, which was essentially an offshoot of the Vickers Medium Mark II, and of which only one example was produced, which was the one that went to Ireland. Like with the Vickers Medium Mark II, it is very lightly armoured, with the armour maxing out at 8mm thick. So useless against almost any incoming fire, including heavy calibre machine guns and possibly even lower calibre machine guns. And due to being built in the 1920s, it unfortunately doesn't have the best speed, maxing out at around 20 miles per hour or 32 kilometers an hour, while having a crew of five. Moving on to the main armament, the gun was a bit of a mixed bag, as it was a quick-firing 57mm 6-pounder gun, though not to be confused with the later quick-firing 57mm 6-pounder gun of World War II fame. I haven't been able to find any concrete penetration figures for against tanks or armour, but comparing it to the 3-pounder on the Vickers Independent tanking game, it should have a slightly lower muzzle velocity at 554 meters a second versus 563 meters a second for the 3-pounder. So we are likely looking at a gun that will do around 30 to 35 millimeters penetration at 500 meters, which isn't great to be honest, though not the worst penetration figure in the world either. In addition to this, it also had four 7.7mm machine guns at various points around the tank, which will help against unarmoured vehicles, but probably isn't going to change your odds of success too much. When introduced into Irish service, it was used to give troops a chance to train on how to operate and work alongside tanks. Though, as you might guess, as it was literally the only tank in Ireland at the time, it would have been of limited use, and would probably have been easily outmatched in combat. Though unfortunately the tank was destroyed in an accident in 1940, so it wouldn't have had a chance to prove itself anyway. In game I would suggest placing it at a battle rating of 1.0 or possibly lower, like with my suggested battle rating system for World War 1 and interwar tanks that I covered in a previous episode. And while not the best tank in the world, I think it would mark a good start for an Irish subtree, or just act as a decent Irish tank in general at the very early battle ratings. A few years after acquiring the Mark D, Ireland would be interested in acquiring more tanks, this time the Swedish Landsverk L60, of which two would be brought and shipped to Ireland, bringing the total tank force to three tanks, with the more modern L60s being far more mobile and versatile than the rather outdated and slow Mark D. Like with the Mark D, these would be used to train troops, and they survived in service until 1968 giving a whopping 34 years of service, and both examples survive to this day. Now, this tank is already in War Thunder in the Swedish tech tree under the name STRV M38, at battle rating 1.0, but there are some differences compared to the examples acquired by Ireland, as the Irish tanks were equipped with a 20mm Madsen cannon instead of the 37mm Bofors gun. This gives a much faster firing rate, but less penetration, with the 20mm Madsen cannons having a penetration of 25mm at 175m, compared to the 37mm Bofors guns, 55mm penetration at 100m. The rest of the stats and battle rating would be the same, so a maximum armour of 13 to 15mm, a top speed of 47km an hour or 29 mph, and a crew of 3 at a battle rating of 1.0. This would be a good upgrade from the Vickers Medium Mark D, giving Irish players a much more mobile vehicle with a much faster firing weapon, and just generally making a very good upgrade from the slow and less well armed Mark D. 
By the outbreak of World War II, Ireland only had the three tanks that we've covered with which to defend itself. And as mentioned at the beginning, this was quickly reduced to just the two L60s when the Ficker's medium Mark D was destroyed in an accident in 1940. Though again, it's very hard to imagine this rather old and outdated tank being useful against a modern enemy, so this probably wasn't such a huge loss on that front. Ireland did acquire Bren carriers and standard Beaverette armoured cars to complement its tank and armoured car forces, but these still would have been inadequate to defence Ireland's neutrality in the event of an invasion. Due to the war, Ireland wasn't able to acquire any more tanks, but in the post-war period, it rented four Churchill Mark 6s, these being labelled 1A, 1B, 1C and 1D. With all four of these arriving by 1949, and later being brought outright in 1954. For the most part, there was very little change to these tanks, with even the paint scheme being kept the same, as there was a stipulation when they were being rented that they would be returned to Britain immediately if required, so they were basically banned from making any changes to them. Though of course, this would change once they were brought. However, one of these tanks would later get stuck at the training ground where they would conduct gunnery tests, and basically Ireland didn't have any heavy equipment with which to remove it. And so what they did instead was just remove the gun and return it to the tank whenever they had to do gunnery tests. And eventually when it was decommissioned in 1967, instead of recovering the tank they decided to simply bury it. Though it was finally recovered in 2003 and now stands in Dunmore Park in Belfast. The rest of the tanks were retired in 1969, primarily due to a lack of parts and the arrival of the more modern Comet tanks. Unfortunately, the Churchill Mark 6s are not currently in War Thunder, so this would need to be produced by Gaijin, but essentially it is a slight upgrade from the previous Churchill Mark 4s, being armed with the quick-firing 75mm gun, a new cupola and applique armour fitted to the hull sides. So this shouldn't be too difficult a tank to implement in War Thunder. However, a lack of spares for the original engines for the Mark VI would result in a rather unique variant of the Churchill tank, as it was proposed to replace the original 350 horsepower Bedford engines with the 600 horsepower Rolls-Royce Merlin engines from the Supermarine Sea Firefighters, which were used by Ireland at the time. Tests were conducted with one of the new engines fitted to one of the tanks, but for whatever reason this would not be adopted for the rest of the Mark VI's. But of course in War Thunder this variant could be added as an interesting event vehicle, giving us a Churchill with much better acceleration and potentially a greater top speed, which would help to fix the major issue of the Churchill tanks which is its slow speed, and giving Ireland a rather unique and powerful variant of the Churchill tank and like I say it just would be a rather unique tank in general. After the Churchill Mark 6s, the next major tank adopted by Ireland would be the A34 Comet with eight of these entering service by 1960. This was a much more modern and mobile vehicle than the ponderous Churchill tanks, and again there were no major changes undertaken to these tanks, so they would operate much like the Comets already in the British tech tree at battle rating 5.3. However, there would be one major variant that would come about due to an accident destroying the turret of one of the Comets, as while the turret was destroyed, the hull was intact, leading to the installation of a borrowed 90mm recoilless rifle on the turret ring. This allowed a 360 degree arc of fire, though extra armour had to be installed around areas leading to the driver and bow machine gun positions, to mitigate against the effects of backblast when firing the weapon. Unfortunately, the turret itself is now completely exposed, leaving the gunner vulnerable to enemy fire, especially from the air. The 90mm recoilless rifle, however, would be an extremely effective weapon, which, depending on the source used, has a penetration of at least 330 to 380mm when firing heat shells, which is a pretty damn good performance and far superior to the Comet's original gun. Unfortunately, in real life, this modification would not be permanent, and the recoilless rifle was uninstalled and returned to infantry service but in War Thunder this could make a highly mobile and effective tank destroyer, able to quickly traverse the battlefield before unleashing devastating fire from its new main weapon. Its only downside is the exposed fighting compartment, making it especially vulnerable to enemy aircraft and ground machine gun fire. Perhaps a new feature for this tank would be to give the player the ability for the gunner or other gun crew to duck inside the hull when not in combat 
which would help to improve protection when not in combat and could be offset by giving a delay for remanning the rain weapon, but I suspect such a feature would not be added. As for the battle rating, I think this could go at around 6.0 or 6.3, where its gun wouldn't be too overpowered and it would still be able to deal with most enemies. And in general, I think this would be a rather unique and pretty cool vehicle to have available for Irish players. Last but not least, we come to the FV-101 Scorpion, which was a British light tank of which 14 were acquired by Ireland in the 1980s. I have covered this tank in a previous episode on British light tanks, and for the most part very few changes have been made to the Irish variants. With the main weapon still being a 76mm gun, firing a Hess shell with 80-90mm penetration, as well as smoke, shrapnel, HE and illumination shells. It also has a Coaxial 7.62mm machine gun, a crew of three, extremely light armour and a ridiculous top speed of 45mph or 72km an hour, which also means it holds the world record for the fastest production tank. However, there is one noticeable change to the Irish variant in that it can carry a machine gun on the roof, which initially was a 50 cal brand new machine gun, though this was later changed to a 7.62mm GPMG machine gun mainly due to the large silhouette of the 50 cal weapon. This could perhaps be added as a vehicle modification, allowing you to switch between the two weapons, or maybe remove them entirely to aid in concealment. Like with the British Scorpion tank, I would suggest adding this at a battery rating of around 6.0, mainly on account of its Hess shell, because while the Hess shell only has 80 to 90 millimeters penetration, this is not affected by sloping, so you could still take out T-34s and Panther tanks relatively easily, but more heavily armoured tanks would be mostly immune against the Scorpion tank. So I think battle rating 6.0 would be a fairly good place for it to go, though its battle rating could be lowered or raised as required. So that is all of the various Irish tanks I think should be added to War Thunder. I think out of all of these, the Headless Coachman or the Churchill Mark VI with the Merlin engine are probably the ones I'd be looking forward to the most, as these are rather cool and unique variants that we can't really get in other tech trees, and I think they would be a major boon to War Thunder in general. But I'd like to hear in the comments what your favourite Irish tanks are, and which ones you're looking forward to the most, as well as suggestions for any other Irish tanks I might have missed. I look forward to reading your comments below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Hopefully you'll join me for the next one. I've been Toreno and I'll see you next time.